All right, guys, so today I wanted to do a video on the Canon PowerShot V10. And in my opinion, I think this is probably one of Canon's most underrated cameras. And I think this partly has to do with the design, and I think this has to also do with the marketing. I mean, this is said to be a small vlogging camera, which it really is. I mean, it has a kickstand on the back so that you could just kind of place it wherever. It has a two inch flippy screen so you can flip it up and you can see what you're shooting. And it's just a tiny camera in general. It's smaller than pretty much every phone. It kind of fits in the palm of your hands. And it also has a one inch CMOS sensor. So uh, this is the same sensor that's in the Osmo Pocket 3, which is getting like all the praise right now, which it deserves. But I do feel like the PowerShot V10 coming in at $429, although this thing is on sale so much at around the $350 price tag, I honestly think it's a hell of a bargain, but hear me out, let me explain why. So first, before we actually get into all that, let's talk about some of the features that it has. Like I said, it has that one inch CMOS sensor, uh, which makes this a camera that is really good in low light. Uh, it also has a built-in ND filter. So if you're gonna be using this outdoors, uh, where with other cameras, you normally have to buy ND filters so that you can adjust your shutter speed to match with the frame rate that you're shooting to get this really cinematic look. Having this ND filter already on the camera allows you a lot of controls without needing to buy anything extra. Now the camera does record on micro SD cards and so it doesn't use normal SD cards. Uh, the lens on here is a 19 millimeter f 2.8 wide angle fixed lens. So that's the only lens that you get on it. You can't go buy external lenses, but that's a pretty wide view. So for vlogging, it's gonna be more than enough to get you in the shot and get plenty of your surroundings. There are different stabilization modes built into the camera. And depending on which one you use, there's basically off where you can just use it like it is and you get, you know, this big wide shot. Uh, then you can switch it into normal image stabilization and it crops it in just a little bit. And then you can go into to their enhanced stabilization, which crops in even more. And I've seen other YouTubers say that the enhanced mode crops in way too much. And I actually kind of disagree with this. I was still able to hold the camera about an arm's length away, and I still felt like it had plenty of footage of things around me. It wasn't like zoomed in right at my face. Uh, and the stabilization in that mode is actually very good. But one thing I do want to point out though, is if you use stabilization and you also have that ND filter on, this is something that they don't tell you. And this is something that uh, it's all being done electronically. So what's happening here is it's causing things to kind of jitter at times. So if, if you're going to use stabilization on, I would turn the ND filter off. Uh, and I'm one of those that I like to go in and tinker with things. And I think shooting in manual is going to be the best way to get the best looking footage out of here. But this camera is really intended for you to just turn it on auto, hit that record button on the front and just start recording. It's not really made to be over complicated. And this camera is definitely not that. Now, as far as some other things, it does have a battery that's internal. It's not one that you can go and buy extra batteries to switch out. Uh, this is definitely a negative on this camera because if you shoot in 4K, which I do, uh, you can really only expect to get just under an hour's worth of shooting. In fact, I've kind of averaged around 50 to 55 minutes. Uh, so if you shoot at 1080p, you'll be able to get longer battery life, uh, but do keep that in mind. Now, another huge plus is you can actually use this camera as a webcam and a damn good webcam at that. Uh, it has Canon's colors, so everything looks nice and vibrant and rich. Uh, it's not oversaturated when it comes to skin tones, and this is just gonna come down to personal preference anyway. Uh, I normally shoot with a Canon EOS RP, uh, that is my main camera and I'm using a 35 millimeter f 1.8 lens. Uh, but I've noticed that with the V10, I can get a very similar look. Now because it's 2.8, I don't get as much background separation from, you know, shooting on me as opposed to what's in the background, but the colors and the overall look is very, very similar. So here is just a test to show you what it would look like in a studio environment. This is the exact same lighting uh, that I use for my normal shots uh, on a much more expensive camera and lens combo, where this is just a $429 
uh, camera with the lens that is already on it. Uh, nothing else applied to it. This is just the footage straight out of the camera. So even using it as a B cam for like product shots uh, can definitely work in my case uh, most of the time. Now as far as uh, the different formats and things that you can shoot at, I shoot at 4K24, but this camera shoots up to 4K 30 frames per second. Uh, if you shoot in 1080p, you can actually get up to 60 frames per second. So if you're somebody that likes to slow down your footage and get some really good slow motion, you'd have to shoot in 1080p to actually do this. Uh, so the 4K 30 is definitely more than enough for me because the 4K 24 is exactly what I shoot all of my footage in. I don't normally shoot uh, slow motion shots anyway. Uh, and the different shooting modes that you actually have, which are just kind of pre-built, I mean, they kind of make this camera as dumbed down as possible, where it's super simple to just shoot. Obviously, it's in the auto mode right out of the gate. Uh, there is also a smooth skin mode that you can shoot in. Uh, there is an image stabilization mode, which I don't get that when you can already turn on stabilization in the other modes. And then there is manual. Now, manual is what I shoot in pretty much all the time. Uh, and to me, it's not really full manual. Now, they have white balance where you can kind of slide it and just see the colors and kind of hope uh, it matches what you want. There's no true custom white balance where with like Canon cameras, uh, you take a photo of a white card or a gray card uh, and then have the custom white balance set. That way, this is me, again, overthinking things. This is me also probably making it a little more complicated with shooting with this camera. But it's nice to know that, you know, you can go in, set your shutter speed, set the aperture. Uh, you can even go in and set the ISO the way that you want. Uh, and I feel like with vlogging, I think the best thing to do is to go ahead and set your shutter speed, set your aperture, let ISO be in auto mode so it can just kind of adjust, you know, depending on where you're at, and also let your white balance adjust as well. I know that's normally not, you know, encouraged with most cameras, but with this one, I feel like it's so much better to use it this way than using it in full auto mode. Now, another thing about the camera is it has two microphones up top that I think do an excellent job. I think it picks up my voice very well. Uh, there's also three little dots under the Canon logo, and this is a microphone that's made to kind of block out some external noise. So it really is trying to focus in on your voice uh, and do a good job of blocking out things around you. And for the most part, uh, it handles this extremely well. So this is me just walking around the house. Uh, the camera's like an arm's length away. Now the stabilization is on enhanced mode. So this is how cropped in it would be using it in that mode. Uh, there's no lights on in this room. There are, you know, a little bit of the sunlight coming in through the window. Um, but as you can tell, it's very smooth. Uh, it's focused in on my face, so it should just completely be in focus the whole time. Now I'm going to go into a darker area, which now I'm going into the kitchen. Again, no lights are on. There's a little bit of light coming in through the window. But you can see that this is easily a camera that you could just walk around and vlog with. And I think it's pretty inconspicuous. It's not one of those you have to worry that it's going to draw a lot of attention. You don't have to have the huge gimbal. Now some other things about the camera uh, as far as inputs and outputs, there is like a micro or mini HDMI uh, output on the side. There's also a mic input, which I use. Like right now I'm using this external mic with my normal Canon EOS RP, and I can use that exact same thing on the V10. The only problem is though, there's no like cold shoe mount to actually mount the receiver onto the camera. Uh, there is a small rig case that you can buy that would actually give you the ability to have that cold shoe mount. And it also comes with like two wind muffs to put on the microphones if you're gonna be using this camera outdoors like on a windy day. Now I do feel like the wind muffs is something that Canon should have included in the box with the camera. Uh, Sony does this with their ZV-1 and ZV-1F, uh, which I think is a very comparable camera. So like if you're looking at the Sony ZV-1, uh, but you're more of a Canon shooter, this is the camera that you would go with. It is very comparable to that. And the only other thing that I wish they would have done, uh, because the lens is fixed on here, you're not gonna be switching it out. I really wish that it would have come with a cover for the lens out of the box. I had to go on Amazon and actually buy this little cover here that can stay on it, and then I just turn it to actually open it up. So I don't have like this little cap that I have to pull off and put in my pocket or keep up with. 
the cover is actually on the camera at all times. And it does add a little bit more bulk to the camera, but not really much at all, especially given the fact that it's keeping my lens protected. And I'll link this in the description along with the camera itself. Uh, and really, the reason I wanted to do this video is because I have watched so many videos on the Canon V10 and a lot of people just don't like it. And there's certain things they can't get it to look right. Uh, most of their footage looks grainy or most of their footage looks shaky. And I think it really kind of comes down to user error. And I'm not criticizing these people specifically, but I've noticed while using this camera, it takes incredible footage. It does really good in low light. And I noticed that I can get footage that doesn't look uh, shaky or jittery at all. And I think it's again because of that ND filter mixed with stabilization being on. And that just kind of comes down to Canon not really explaining some of these things or having some of the auto features not really just work well out of the box. So it does take a little bit of tinkering to get the right footage, but once you do and you find the settings that work for you, this is a very capable camera that can take some really, really good video. Uh, but guys, I just, again, this kind of wraps up this video. I think the cons, the main things here is the battery life does suck on this camera. I uh, don't expect to get a whole lot of shooting time on it. Uh, no cold shoe mount on here is also kind of a bummer, especially when you have a mic input already built in on the camera. So you do have to buy something extra to keep the transmitter or the mic actually locked in onto the camera. Again, it is you know marketed as a vlogging camera, but you know you can use a camera like this as a studio cam. If you're getting started with YouTube and you just need a camera that you don't want to spend a whole lot of money. Uh, you may do some blogging, uh, you may do, you know, like right now a talking headshot. This camera already has the tripod mount on the bottom so you can just screw it into any tripod and then just start shooting. I, I think this is an excellent beginner camera. I think it's an excellent B cam. I think it's a great blogging camera. I think it's going to look way better than most phones uh, front facing cameras. Those are just generally not the best. And so to have this one inch sensor and to get Canon's colors and to get something that's very pocketable, uh, especially once you buy the accessory that's protecting the lens on the front, this is a pretty impressive camera that again, I think is definitely underrated and I think it's getting overlooked because of a lot of uh, bad reviews on it. But guys, that's my video on the Canon PowerShot V10. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Thank you so much for checking out all the other videos. And as always, make sure to stay tuned for more.